Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of OCD TV. With me tonight, a man whose love of nerd culture is dwarfed only by his love of musical theater, Keith Martin. And, I, and next to me, a man whose Facebook feed is filled with so much skepticism, I'm starting to doubt even my own existence. <laughs> Brian Connors. We're doing crackpot conspiracy theories. Um, and this is a subject near and dear to your heart. Yes. Or at least that's what your feed tells me. Yes, <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've loved making fun of stupid people all my life. What can I say? I know. Oh, and I brought hats. Woohoo! Oh, there you go. That's, 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 the, that's the block, what, the Ampa waves? Or I don't know. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's the. Um, it's the I never the, got the tinfoil hat. Yeah, it's, it's a thing, you know. CIA's I mean, if you wanted to, like. It, but but to me, that'd be like an antenna. It'd be like, you know. Amplifying your brain. Well, no, it could You're asking block it to it. make sense. Well, well, let's think about this for a minute. Like, how much? Let's really what, analyze what, this. What can tinfoil block? Hmm. I, I just I mean, kind of roll it up and put it on like a, in my radio antenna yeah, to make it, yeah. you know, get better reception. I, you know. I don't, well, yeah, maybe it was like it's supposed to be some sort of interference. It must. Be. And is there like a specific it shape? Yeah. Is there like? Is there like? Is there? Is there? I've seen like there? pictures. They have like a little thingy on it. And it's funny. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like they're supposed to protect themselves, but then they put an antenna. You on. know what they never do? They never ground it. You're right. They you got to ground, ground it. it. I mean, the the the, the, the mind work, control actually. signal comes in. Since it's a conductor, it should be. It should go to ground. It might actually right. work if they grounded it, but they just don't get it. Well, maybe they're yeah. making. Maybe 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 the tinfoil hat people are the actual victims. Hmm, could be. Maybe they're the ones who are actually the conspirators. My they wear own. the hats to get the information. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of an unusual topic. Uh, I think maybe, well, maybe not. I don't know. We've done a broad range of topics on this show, but this, I think, is something that is, is it overlaps with nerd culture quite a bit. A little bit, bit yeah. I mean, we, we tend to sort of accept everyone the, into, into our little microcosm of, yeah, of, of, uh, of humanity. Point of note, we're not going to get into the more political or inflammatory ones. We're not going to talk about downed airplanes or assassinated presidents or anything like that because that can get people really excited. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> in, 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 in a way that uh, I don't think really, really, really. And we're not going to do, do, we're not going to do the more heavily scientific ones either because None of us are Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's an entire show, and it's outside. And I know. We would have to cite our resources, and I. And then I, you know, I don't have that. Idea. Didn't have the impetus to actually do any real research. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I don't want to make that kind of effort. It's public access. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what do you want to start with? Um, well, uh, this is this is your wheelhouse, Brian. So indeed, so fire away. All right. Well, I thought we'd start first with the uh, whole idea of the moon landing hoax. Uh, as we all know, um, 1969, uh, man, first man on the moon, uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Um, shortly after a mysterious alien helped Richard Nixon defeat the silence. Uh, what? <laughs> Sounds wibbly cool. wobbly, timey wimey. Oh right, 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 right. Um, right. Um, so, one of the things about it is that. You, you hear a lot of arguments that almost sort of make sense when you talk about it. Like, you know, it's like, how come you didn't see the stars and pictures of the moon? Right. How come, you know, the dust behaves the way it does and all that? It's like, you know, why is why does the flag look, why is the flag waving? Even right, and so, so what would be, well, what, what, what are, what are the- The flag's made of metal. Well, part <laughs> yeah. What is what is the what is the explanation essentially? Okay, to start with, okay, why aren't there stars in the background? Ah, that's because of the uh, the way the film the way the cameras worked. The film just wasn't fast enough to pick up the stars. Okay. They sent up some fairly expensive Hasselblad cameras for the uh, shots. And you cheap Kodak film? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I doubt it was cheap. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Kodak had a few. Uh, friends at NASA tell them what they needed. <laughs> yeah. But point was the, the shots they took on the um, the shots they took on the moon, if it had been much faster, they'd have been blown out. So you wouldn't be able to see the stars because they simply wouldn't get enough light to the lens. Right. I mean I I take uh, star pictures from time to time and I still haven't mastered it. I mean you have to have a very long exposure, uh, very, very light sensitive sensor. 
And one of the one of the other things is you can't really be looking at anything else because it'll wash you know. them out. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So like even the reflection of sunlight off the surface of the moon was right. washing that out a little bit. Right. Okay. They could have probably taken a better shot at night, but the lunar night is what 15 days. Something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. I don't think they were there that long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would have yeah. run out of oxygen. They wanted to get. The, and that's another thing. People talk about. You know, people talk about radiation belts and all that. And yeah, outer space has a lot of radiation in it. But one of the things that the uh, moon hoax believers insist is that, you know, they had to, you know, they couldn't survive that. And it's technically true, but that's because they were very careful with the timing on the launch. Right. You know, they had, they had as good a, they had as good a picture in the late 60s as they could of the space weather, whether there's any solar flares or whatever. Right. So they basically said, okay, we're gonna go and cross our fingers. Mm -hmm. Right, so if there was a massive solar flare or something like yeah. that, that would have been a big problem. Yeah, and plus they did this with computing power, that, you know. Calculator? <laughs> barely. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was a lot of, just, it was, uh, I mean, a lot of those com computations were done by nerds with slide rules. Yeah. And they still got us there, so. Good old slipstick. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that I think impresses me more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And I guess what upsets me about uh, uh, people saying the moon landing was faked is, is, is it, is it takes one of the greatest achievements of mankind, probably the greatest achievement yeah. so far, and 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 completely debases it and turns it into a joke. And I really hate that. We yeah. did that. Yeah. We sent men to the moon. Yep. Besides, if we're awesome. Besides, if, if NASA faked the moon landing, you know. Why haven't they faked anything else of any good significance? And here's That's a big, here's a, a great question. Wouldn't it be easier to do Mars? <laughs> here's a bigger Red question. Red filter on the lens. You're done. Okay. 1969, height of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. Now, call me crazy, but with, well, you know, with, oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I am, but we don't want to get into that. Um, with the Apollo launches and the space program up to that point, people had telescopes on the sky the whole time. If we announced a moon launch and people looked up and didn't see us, the Soviet Union would have called us out all over the world mm -hmm. loudly. Oh, yeah. And that's, that, I think, is the number one reason that we had to have gone because there was no way we could have not gone and not be noticed. Yeah, especially since during the space race, the Soviets hid all of their failures yeah. and mistakes and only published their successes and were more than happy to show every time an American rocket blew up mm. on the pad. Yep. Yeah, and there's actually, there's actually a conspiracy theory about that too, but I didn't prepare for it. Okay. Well, but that's, that's, basically that's, that's, there's a, supposedly this, there was a whole bunch of cosmonauts before Gagarin who were killed during launches, but the evidence is, comes down to basically a couple of Italian brothers with some sketchy sources. Oh. Mm. So. I mean, I mean, I, it's not inconceivable to think that a couple of guys probably would have died yeah. in yeah. those and the experiments, I mean, and the Russians covered it up, but now that there isn't a Soviet Union anymore, yeah. it seems like their families might have come out and said... No, they died. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, there yeah. would be more evidence, essentially. Well, plus died. it's a funny thing. Um, Russian engineering has this interesting thing where where we try to assume stupid human smart machine and like we try to idiot proof everything uh, the Russians just want to make sure it works so for example the submarine that used to be parked down in Providence the bulkheads had circular hatches instead of door shaped because it was just easier to keep yeah and, they, and you know the Soviets were known for making everything really robust yeah, and, and they, all, they weren't and, a fans of fly-by-wire or anything else like that. They didn't want other things to break. And more to the point, there's a book, uh, Ignition by John Clark. Uh, you can find it. I, I don't remember the exact website, but I think it's University of Michigan. It has an archive of old science books. You can download it there. Mm -hmm. And it's a history of rocket propellant development in the uh, 50s and 60s. And one of the things they said about the Russians is that when they wanted to, when we wanted to build a bigger rocket, we did a lot of insane chemistry with some really scary substances. <laughs> the Russians just made bigger rockets with more kerosene in the tank. That's, that's well, it's just like you know, the AK-47, which is a fantastic weapon. Mm. You can drop it in mud, pick it up, and still fire it. Yeah. 
I, you know, I was in the military, and I, you know, with the M16A2, you get a little dust on that thing. It <laughs> but we digress. I'm yeah, saying, talking no. about Russian-made things. Yeah, okay. yeah. But the, yeah, the, the, that the, has nothing to do with the moon landing. Um, <laughs> why? This this is more of a question because of the research that you've done. Um, according to the uh, moon landing uh, skeptics, why did we fake it? You know, that's anyone's guess, but I think, again, the Cold War comes into play. Yeah, you know, the whole the wag the dog thing, the idea is yeah. that we were trying to put one up on the Soviets, so we pretended we were doing something. Right. But again, this was one of those things that was nearly impossible to hide. Right. So, so we're trying to sort of one-up Sputnik. Right. Yeah. One-up Nick. I mean, that was, that was the whole, you know, that was the whole thing with the space program to begin with. I mean... It got, us, it got us a lot of this technology and such, but in some ways it was as much cooperation and one-upsmanship at the same time. And Yeah, I, the, the, when, when you read about the scientists involved on both sides, they attended a lot of meetings together and shared a lot of the science with each other, what they were allowed to anyway. Right. And, I forget and, who said it, but I forget who said it, but in the early 60s, someone asked a famous scientist um, what they expected to find when they got to the moon, and they said Russians. <laughs> <laughs> they were ahead of the game at the time. I, w I could check, but yeah, that would yeah, be kind of That lazy. sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm, we'll, have to, we'll have to Google that later. So you, you had something about the flag you were saying? Oh, no, yeah, the explanation for why the flag is doing what it's, or is behaving in the way well, that's it appears to be. That's interesting, but short. The flag is not actually waving in all the pictures. What happened is that the flagpole that's on wasn't just a stick, it was L-shaped. So when they unfolded it, they couldn't unfold it all the way, so it came out a little wrinkled. Because it was like a crossbar across right, the top, right. and it was stuffed mm -hmm. into the pole and it, or around it. And yeah, it quite and I think what happened was that they couldn't fully extend the crossbar. Mm. Okay. So it's so. not, it's really mundane stuff. So it looked crinkly. Yeah. So it looks cooler than, you yeah. know, because, you know, you never... They did it for effect. Exactly. <laughs> it was totally planned. That's right. You know. Yeah. Just like, just like Neil Armstrong's totally botched line. When yes, he, that's not how it was written. <laughs> no, he, he, had, he had planned it in his head right. and was really nervous and, and blew it. And, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he blew it or just, print it, or just slurred it. Cause I, I, well, he said, okay, it's one small step for man, one small step, one giant leap for mankind. There, I just botched it. See, that's how hard that line is. <laughs> yeah. but, but originally what he had planned to say was right. that's one small step, step for a man. one man. Or a man, and he just kind of. Right. I, I imagine, yeah. as um, being a part of a momentous occasion, nervousness goes. That was probably as high as it gets. Yeah, yeah there's no, no pressure. Yeah. I mean, I feel. I feel like. Just the first guy who's ever going to step foot on the moon. No pressure. Plus, keep in mind, we're talking about a blink over hundreds of thousands of miles, so it's entirely possible. One small step, fra, you know, mm -hmm. kind of slurred them together. Well, and just yeah, got yeah, yeah. Mashed up in the audio. Well, no, he admitted to. Flopping it. it up, but <laughs> again, yeah. Like who else? Like if you're not Neil Armstrong, you're not the guy who did the greatest mm -hmm. thing ever. <laughs> like who can? Who, who's going to top that? Yeah. I well, mean, the first guy to step on Mars. <laughs> that'll be a Chinese man, most likely. Most likely. <laughs> Plus, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things about you know, and you know, the way the dust behaves and such, you know, you don't get dust clouds. Well, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Earth isn't the moon. The gravity, that the Earth and the moon are different. The gravity's a lot lighter. There's mm -hmm. no atmosphere to speak of. So dust gets kicked up, dust goes right down like it was a pile of rocks. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Or, or... But it doesn't fall as quickly because there's less gravity. Or so if it looks it gets, like a cloud. Or if it gets kicked hard enough, just True. launches into orbit. Yeah. <laughs> Because what causes dust clouds is air resistance. But they were very high. But the cameras were very high resolution cameras right, that right. they brought with them. It's not like you can explain this by saying, "Oh well, yeah, terrible probably, equipment." Probably, yeah, they're probably 120 film. Okay. So, so. I mean, that's, that's God, I, can, I mean, it's tough enough you know, getting one of those cameras to work normally. I mean, imagine yeah. getting it to work on the moon. Um, but uh, I guess that addresses all of those concerns. So that, I guess that would segue into our next topic. I'm not saying it was aliens, but it is But it aliens. was aliens. Because <laughs> <aliens. laughs> everything's aliens. We, we, I've watched you enough know. of H2 to know that it's aliens. 
<laughs> Remember when the History Channel played educational programming? Yeah, right. They talked no. about history? They talked yeah, about actual yeah. history. <laughs> Not one guy's crackpot theory that got taken completely out of control. UFOs, something that kept a lot of people fascinated for yeah. uh, the latter half of the 20th century. Mm. Project Blue Book, U.S. Air Force exactly. did extensive yeah. research into the and, matter. And, and as I understand it, the leader of Project Blue Book was convinced that there was a genuine phenomenon taking place. He wasn't actually saying it was aliens, yeah. but he felt like there it was, was something. There was something. Yeah. That it was something. He, yeah. he never, never came out and said aliens, but but uh, huh. uh, um, but all the evidence. I mean, well, I'll let you field this. What? How did we go from you know lights in the sky and to uh, 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 bodies and alien autopsies? Uh, to explanations and weather balloons, and now where we seem to have swamp gas. No, I mean, there, I mean, there hasn't been any photographic evidence of UFOs right, right. ever since everybody got a phone in their pocket. And you know, the few uh, the few cases you find where it might actually be a UFO, probably a plane, like Area 51. I mean, people are like, oh, they must have flying saucers and all that. There, they've done some pretty amazing stuff. That was where the F-117A Nighthawk was was tested out. Yeah, uh, and at that time. There were people talking about these weird triangular-shaped yeah. aircraft yeah. flying and around, and, 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 the, and the, it was really our <laughs> yeah. stealth fighter, which we was in use for ten years before the government even acknowledged it was. Yeah, mm. it, it but, existed. But. You know, actual aliens? No, not so much. Like Roswell, for example. Um, the whole story was kind of embellished by the newspapers, and somehow what was originally a classified project for a balloon carrying a radar reflector turned into a crashed spaceship with bodies and such. And, you know, truth of the matter is, the entire mess fit into the trunk of the Air Force officer who came to investigate. And I think, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, but I feel like people really want aliens to yeah. exist. Right. Well, I, th I, th I think we all well, sort it's of... It's only logical to think that, that that obviously we're not the only the discovery living creatures of that existed. An extra an intelligent extraterrestrial life form. The, the discovery of a microbe would on be another just, planet yeah, would huge. be the greatest discovery in human right. history. That would be momentous, and I think people are just really excited about. It. Here's one of the only things, like as far as aliens visiting, that I always kind of go back to. It's, it's like okay, so they flew all this way. They don't talk to anybody. You know, except for maybe some guy who's all alone, way out in the sticks. No one else sees it. It's <laughs> like a teaser yeah. from Douglas Adams. <laughs> exactly, you know, the you know, teasers. Just, think about it. Though. Rich kids with nothing to do. They fly <laughs> off to some planet and land next to some poor fool nobody's going to believe. Exactly. You know, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's, that's the obvious explanation. I think, right. uh, you know, why wouldn't they go to a, you know, population center? <laughs> well, there is a darker side to the whole thing, though, because... You know, you talk about alien abductions and all that, and that seems to have a very long history before anybody really seemed to know what, know what aliens was. You go back to medieval legends, incubi, succubi, right, yeah. Yeah. and there's actually a term for that. If you're, you know, because sometimes when you're either falling asleep or waking up, sometimes you wind up having these really vivid and traumatic dreams and a lot of times they have mm. elements of not being able to escape and, you can, and, mm. and and you're probably experiencing sleep paralysis at the right time. Mm -hmm. when you're going to sleep they're called hypnopompic hallucinations when you wake up they're called hypnagogic and in both cases really big words yeah, yeah I had to look them up. get you a dime Hold yeah, on. Ten cent I had to look those up because I wasn't <laughs> sure which was which but what happens is you have these really vivid dreams, and back in the Middle Ages, people would think you were being attacked by witches or demons, demon, right? and now people think it's aliens. Mm -hmm. And they're so vivid, they feel real. I mean, I've had that kind of dream where I wake up and I'm like, wait a minute, well, I'm still did right that here. really happen? Oh yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the problem is people, people mistake it for reality, and mm -hmm. that, you know. Well, what about abduction phenomenon? Like, as I understand the research into it, shows some level of evidence where, or at least some researchers believe that something may have actually happened to certain people. Mm, I would not consider the evidence to be terribly strong. Because okay. what happens in a lot of cases with these kind of things is that, you know, I mean, first you bring in Occam's razor, which is 
you know, traditionally do not multiply entities unnecessarily. In other words, the, simp for the, kids. the simplest explanation yeah. that covers all the evidence is the most likely. Explain it like I'm a five-year-old. <laughs> so it's, you know, once you factor that in, a lot of times it really does come down to things like sleep paralysis, maybe drug use, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, you don't say. <laughs> drug use. A little too much LDS in the 60s. Well, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think there's no. There was a certain uh, overlap, I think, of 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 um, the sort of ufologist yeah. community and you know, sort of the new age religion mm -hmm. community, um, mm -hmm. which which has always struck me yeah. as a bit odd. But I suppose putting your hopes in the future of humanity being brighter. Yeah. Uh, on the shoulders of some great civilization that's Comes mastered, to lead us out of the darkness. Well, exactly, like yeah. exactly. Some kind, of, yeah, <laughs> some a a Promethean extraterrestrial. Right. And the thing is, you know, it, yeah, yeah. There you and go. the thing is, it doesn't help that you know, like Chariots of the Gods, which is one of the more famous books about ancient astronauts. The truth mm -hmm. of the matter is that's that particular book. I like to think of it as the reefer madness of archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> because the author Eric von Daniken has openly admitted to making up facts, and besides which, well, there's it was the seventies. There, besides which, I don't I don't know how many people notice this when they read the book, but there's actually a certain undercurrent of racism in there, that they look at from a German, really Swiss, <laughs> but yeah, well, but close enough. Basically, he's looking at these things that we, you know, we can pretty well explain how the pyramids in Egypt and Mexico and such were built. But they're looking at the, you know, he's looking at these things and saying, well, they, they, they could not have done this. And it's, it's just, it's, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah. you had a group of civilizations right. spread throughout the world. Religion developed independently amongst most of those. We all understand this. Religion is common to every culture on planet Earth. Yeah. Most of them had legends about gods in the sky. Yeah. And they needed to reach the gods, or perhaps um, they were astronomers and wanted a vantage point over the forest. And they as needed I, to get higher, mm -hmm. was, was, was uh, the yeah. point. And, and as I said to someone in a... Similar problem, uh, same solution. Mm -hmm. As I said to someone in a... Uh, I have to stop interrupting as much. As I uh, it's said, okay. no, we that's, that's right. Fine. I'm interrupting you now. As I said to someone in your and right now. typical internet flame war last week. Also now. <laughs> the funny thing about pyramids, the only thing they measure Amazing is the dimensions like, of a carefully sure. arranged pile of rocks such that it won't collapse on itself. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's called geometry. I, I mean, yes. if, if, they, if they were completely <laughs> identical to each other, right down to the artwork, that might. That might right. be a little weird. Actually, the simplest explanation would be that they shared each other's, you know, culture. Yeah. So, so, um, so. Lastly, I guess would be to to move on to our final topic, which sort of links into this whole government cover-up conspiracy thing, um, and those crazy moon rocks. Maybe they brought back, <laughs> but but would be yeah. chemtrails. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I oh, mean, all the condensation coming off the wings of those. Yes, yes. Something, yeah. that, so, so, something that has a, a, a reasonable and understandable aviation, I explanation. Know. People who who actually know what's going on. Like, I remember I asked my dad, "What's that coming off of the back of the plane?" Yeah. When I was about three, and he said, "That's condensation coming off the wingtips." Mm. Yeah. And Where the, did that or, come or from? Or directly behind the engines because well, it yeah, heats, yeah, the, yeah. heats the air and obviously. Well, the story. The story as I've heard it starts with as many of these things do, xenophobia back in the 90s, which if you don't remember the 90s were politically a lot like they are now, except with less internet. Mm. Well, you know, in the 90s, the internet helped foment these things yeah. really fast because communities were getting together yeah. and sharing their information, as opposed to the last 10 years where it's been dedicated to sort of debunking it. Yeah. And cat videos. And cat videos. Yeah. Okay, well, those cat videos. But somewhere... Someone got the idea, you know, because one of the things that's a common issue for um, conservation is at some point the earth is going to have to have less people. So the more paranoid among us take that to mean that the forces, the powers that be want to kill everybody off. 
you hear the term useless eaters thrown around and that sort of thing. And, and that, yeah, and that's all based on sort of mouth, yeah, Malthusianism and, and racism. And, yeah, and it's and, it's a total misunderstanding of things like the UN's Agenda 21. I mean, it's not yeah. nobody act nobody important actually supports these things. But try telling that to these people. Anyway, sometime in the 1990s, someone got the idea that contrails were actually being were actually some kind of spray to do something. Exactly what nobody really seems to Mind agree control, on. Yes. Well, wait, wait. So is that what the tinfoil hats are for? Yeah. That's no, that's for uh, that's for that's for beams. It's like the uh, it's like uh, it's, uh, the underpants gnomes. You know? Yeah. Phase yeah. one, collect underpants. Phase yeah. two. Phase three, profit. Phase one, spray chemicals. Like, wouldn't we be able to, I mean, at some point, wouldn't have somebody, like, been able to detect it? Yeah. I guess? Well, plus. Well, they're hiding it, of course. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> real sprayer planes go very low to the ground because, you know, if you're spraying pesticides or whatever it is that crop dusters spray, you don't want it spread all over the place. No. You want to get as much of it in area as possible. If you're spraying way up 30, 40,000 feet, the winds are not going to be the same as they are on the right. ground. No. So and essentially, it's 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 one of these things where but maybe it's a somebody's slow really change. gotten carried away with the yeah. concept. Yeah. Essentially, and then, well, that brings us to the end of our show. Oh wow! Covering yeah. those three topics. Yeah, that was fast. We actually had a lot to say on that, Brian. Yeah. So. Thanks for watching, everybody. Keep being awesome. <laughs>